uh, Louis Burkhoff, History of Christian Doctrines, Session 14. 博克夫基督教教义史第十四讲，我们讲到艾伦纽和特土良第三部分，他们的基督的位格和关于基督的大功的教义 ，Their Doctrine of the Person and Work of Christ。原文六十四页，中文五十八页。Irenaeus and Tertullian differ considerably. In their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of the person of Christ, Irenaeus and Tertullian, in their doctrine of Irenaeus 的基督论比特鲁良跟西布里达更加的卓越 ，and influenced the latter to a great extent， 在很大的程度上也影响了西布里达的。He is adverse to speculations about the logos。Irenaeus 非常的反对对罗格斯的猜测，或者是揣测。Because these lead at most to probable guesses, 因为这些的揣测的结果最多是一些有可能性的猜想而已。He merely asserts that I don't know. 仅仅宣称说 the logos existed from all eternity 到罗格斯从永恒就存在 and was instrumental in revealing the Father. 他就这个道，是启示父上帝的器皿。And then takes his real starting point in historically revealed Son of God. 而爱德纽的基督论的起点是在在历史上显现的神的儿子，是神的儿子啊，历史上显现的神的儿子。Through the incarnation, the Logos became the historical Jesus. Logos 或者道，其实道成肉身，就成为历史上的耶稣 ，and thereafter was at once true God and true man. 从此以后，同时是真神，也是真人。He rejects the heresy of the Gnostics. 他拒绝。或者反对诺斯底主义者的异端，就是说 ，that in his suffering and death, the passable Jesus was separated from the impassable Christ。这个异端就是说，在耶稣受苦和死的时候，那个能受苦的基督和那个在耶稣的受苦和死的时候，那个能受苦的耶稣，就是那个不能受苦的基督分开了。And attaches the greatest significance to the union of God with union nature. 啊，刚才讲的是爱德纽所反对的。他反对的是，在基督耶稣死的时候，能受苦的耶稣和不能受苦的基督分开。而正面的来说，爱德纽特别强调，神啊，不是神性啊，神与人性的联合，把这个神性的性质。把它除掉。艾伦纽指出，神与人性联合的重要意义。In Christ, as the second Adam, the human race is once more united to God. 在基督里，身他身为第二亚当，全人类再一次的与神联合，不是得以。那这个都是我们华人呐、啊，翻译的时候呢，把我们那些个可能性啊，那些都读进去。没有得意的，就是与神联合。我们很不习惯直截了当讲一些事情的，对加个什么得意啊、能够啊那些，是那个原文是没有的。There is in him a recapitulation of mankind， 在基督里有着一个人类的复原或者恢复 recapitulation， which reaches backward as well as forward。这个复原一方面是指过去的，也是指将来的人。And in which mankind reverses the course on which it entered at the fall. 在这个复原中
，人类就从他在堕落的时候开始走的路途呢，回转过来了。没有讲到迷失啊。This is the very core of the Christological teaching of Irenaeus. Irenaeus 的基督论的教导的核心就在于此。The death of Christ as a substitute is mentioned but not stressed. 基督的死是作为我们的替代。Ivan 有有提，但是没有强调。The central element in the work of Christ is, is his obedience. 耶稣基督的基督的工作的最核心的要素是他的顺服。Whereby the disobedience of Adam is cancelled. 借着基督的顺服。就抵消了亚当的不顺服，那这点是非常精彩的。这个我的评论啊，所以改革中后来再把它拾起来、捡起来再来返回的。特土良 t e r t u l i a n t e r t u l i a n s Christology， 特土良的基督论。t e r t u l i a n takes a starting point in the doctrine of the Logos。特土良的起点是道罗格斯的教义。But develops it in a way that became historically significant. 但是他发挥这个道德教育的方法，就带有历史的重要性。就是说，就影响到后来的历史。He stresses the fact that 他土良强调一个事实，就是 the logos of the Christians is a real subsistence. 基督徒的道或者 logos 罗格斯。是一个真正的存在者 ，subsistence， an independent person， 他是一个独立的位格，不是有，他不是有一个位格，他就是一个独立的位格 ，who was begotten by God， 是由神所生 ，and thus proceeded from him， 因此。从神而出，这个因此，因此，从神而出 ，not by emanation， 不是借着反射 ，but by self projection， 乃是自动生长。那这个词呢，啊，真的很难翻译的。自动生长是蛮不错的一个翻译 ，self projection，just as a root projects a tree， 就等于树根。生出一棵树来，或者一棵树从根部生长。There was a time when he was not。中文这样翻译的，道并非自起初就存在，这个翻译是对的。There was a time when he was not。有一段时间，道还没有存在的。啊，这个是。很大的错误啊 ！He emphasizes the fact that the logos is of the same substance with the Father. 他特鲁良强调一件事实，就是罗格斯与父是属于同一个本质的 ，yet differs from him in mode of existence as a distinct person. 但是作为一个独特的位格。在生存形态上，是与父不一样的。那我再说一次，这个是很有影响力的。他说，罗格斯与父是有的同一个实质或者是本质，但是因为他是一个个别的位格，所以与父在生存形态上是不一样的。呃，到了后来，尼西亚、新近等等还是用。这个说法，所以很早，特土良就很精彩的说出这方面的真理。He did not come into existence by partitioning. 道，并不是透过分隔而开始存在的 ，but by self unfolding， 乃是自我展示，中文翻成自我啊、呃，自我彰显，这个是 OK 的。The father. 啊，下面呢是一个非常严重的错误。The Father is the whole substance. 父是神的本质的全部 ，but the Son is only a part of it. 
。儿子只不过是神性的一部分 ，because he is derived， 因为子是衍生出来的，没有重复这两个字，当然放进去没有错。Tertullian did not entirely get get away from the idea of subordination. 他土良并没有完全脱离从俗的概念，就是子弟如果父。His work is of lasting significance in connection with the introduction of the conceptions of substance and person into theology. 他的著作有着深远的重要性，就是因为他在神学里面介入了本质 （substance） 和位格。Person, the kind of ideas that were utilized in the construction of the Nicene Creed. These ideas in building the Nicene Creed were used. It may be said that we can say that he enlarged the doctrine of the Logos into a doctrine of the Trinity. He made the Logos doctrine expand into a three-way doctrine. In opposition to the Monarchian theory, he opposed 神格唯一说，那这个我们下一下两章会讲到。他反对神格唯一说。He stressed the fact that the three persons in the Godhead are of one substance. 他强调这个事实，就是神格里的三个位格是属同一个本质的，属也可以有都可以啊。他是。三个位格都有或者都属同一个本质 ，susceptible of number without division， 数字上是三，但是没有分裂或者分隔啊，因为没有说本质上分裂啊，数字上虽然是三，但是绝对没有分裂。Yet he did not succeed in reaching the full trinitarian. Statement, 但是要说出一个完整的三一论，他并没有成功。He too conceived of the logos as originally impersonal reason in God. 他也同样的认为罗格斯原来是在神里面的非位格的理性，非位格的理性或者无位格的理性都可以了。Became personal at the time of creation. 在上帝创造的时候，才成为有位格的，或者成为位格。And subordination of the one person to the other is presented in a crude form of a greater and lesser participation in the first and second persons and the divine substance. 而一个位格从属或者低过另外一个位格。用一个很粗略的方法表达，就是说，第一个跟第二个位格，在神的本质的参与上是有不同的程度的。就是说，第一个位格父和第二个位格罗格斯，他们有或多或少的本质，神的本质，这个是很粗略的一个说法。Relative to the God-Man and his two natures, Tertullian expressed himself very much as the school of Asia Minor did. Tertullian 论到神人和他的二性的时候，不是基督和神人和他的二性的时候呢，他的他的表达方式就非常靠近亚细亚的学派。He surpasses all the other fathers except Melito in doing justice to the full humanity of Christ. 除了 Melito， 莫里托以外，他比所有其他的教父们都更加能够说清楚基督完整的人性。And in his clear distinction of the two natures, each one retaining its own attributes. 同时。他的人也清楚地区别出两性，神性跟人性都保存着独有的属性啊，神性有神性里面的属性
，人性有人性里的属性，这这个都是很精彩的。According to him, there's no fusion. 根据他所讲，啊，神性和人性没有融合 fusion。But a conjunction of the human and the divine in Christ, 只是基督里的属人的和属神的啊、呃、连接而已。He's very emphatic on the importance of the death of Christ. 他对良非常强调基督之死的重要性。But it's not entirely clear on this point. 但是在这点上说的并不完全清楚。Since he does not stress the necessity of penal satisfaction, because he does not stress the necessity of penal satisfaction, the necessity, but only that of penitence on the part of the sinner. He only stresses the necessity of penal satisfaction. The necessity, but only that of penitence on the part of the sinner. He only stresses the necessity of penal satisfaction. The necessity, but only that of penitence on the part of the sinner. He only stresses the necessity Well, he does recognize the punitive element in justice. 虽然他啊、呃、承认在上帝的公义里有着惩罚的要素 ，he exalts the mercy of God. 他更加的高举神的怜悯。At the same time, a certain legalism pervades his teaching. 但是与此同时，在他的教导中充满着一种的道德主义的成分。He speaks of satisfaction made for sins committed after baptism by repentance or confession. 他说到，在洗礼之后所犯的罪，需要悔改或认罪来补罪的，或者补过的。By fasting and other forms of mortification, the sinner is able to escape eternal punishment. 接着进食或者其他不同的呃，禁欲 modification， 最能能够逃脱永恒的惩罚。所以这里有一种的洗礼之后的行为主义或者律法主义。第三 ，Irenaeus on the work of redemption， 爱认牛论救赎之功。Of the anti-agnostic fathers, Irenaeus gives the fullest description of the work of Redemption, but his representation is not altogether consistent. Irenaeus, 在所有反对诺斯底主义的教父中，对救赎大功描述的最完整，但是他的表述也不是完全一致的。For he is regarded as one of the most orthodox of the early church fathers. 一方面，他被认为是早期教父中最正统的一位。And、there are two lines of thought present in his writings which are hardly scriptural. 但是在他的著作里面有两条的思路，完全不符合圣经的。The one moralistic, 一条思路是道德主义性的。And the other, somewhat mystical, 另外一条思路是比较神秘主义的。According to the former, 根据这个道德主义的倾向。Man regains his destiny when he voluntarily chooses the good which is still able to do. 当人自愿地选择一些他仍然能够行得到的、行出来的善的时候，他就再次重获他的未来的结局了，就是他就重获他的永生了。这个是当。他选择行善，而且他是有能力去行善的。The real significance of Christ's work lies in the fact that he brought the sure knowledge of God. 基督的大功真正的重要性在于他带来关于神的确实的知识 ，and thus strengthened the freedom of man. 因此呢，强化了人的自由。那这个是道德主义，强调人的自由意志的那面。另外一面呢是神秘主义。According to the second， 而根据后者，就是神秘主义的倾向。Christ recapitulates the whole human race in Himself。基督
，在它里面重新恢复了全人类 ，recapitulates 恢复 ，and thus establishes a new relation between God and man. 因此设立了一个神人之间一个新的关系 ，and becomes the leaven of a new life in humanity. 因此就成为在人类里一个新生命的一个的面交。The Logos identified himself with humanity in his sufferings and death. Logos 在他的受苦和死上与人类认同了 ，and becomes instrumental in raising it to a higher level by sacrificing and immortalizing it. Logos 呢，也借着使人成圣，使人永生，而将人。提升到更高的层次，它是这个提升人性的这个器皿。He recapitulates in himself the whole human race. 在它里面，它恢复了整个的人类 ，and reverses the course which derives the impetus from the fall of the first Adam. 它就翻转了。因为第一个亚当堕落所显生的动力 ，He communicates to it the leaven of a new and immortal life. 他向人类传递了一个新的、不朽坏的生命的面教。This may easily be and has frequently been interpreted as teaching atonement by a mystical process begun in the incarnation and resulting in the deification of man. 这很容易被理解为，也常常被理解为，艾伦纽斯教导一种的赎罪的过程的，是一个神秘的过程，从道成肉身开始，最后的结果是人的神话 deification。那这里中文中文翻译本的注脚呢，是要把这个神话呢的严重性冲淡。就把它说成是好像东正教一种的成圣观一样，啊，这个是当代学者们的一厢情愿。注脚是不属于原著的。The emphasis on this idea in the writings of Irenaeus may be due to the fact that he was influenced by the Johannine writings more than by the Pauline epistles. Irenaeus 对这个概念就是面教跟。人的神话的强调，可能是因为他受到约翰的著作的影响多过受到保罗书信的影响。It is quite evident, however, that Irenaeus did not mean to teach a purely mystical or hyperphysical redemption. 但是很明显的是，艾伦纽的用意并不是教导一个纯粹是神秘的或者超肉身的救赎。While he strongly emphasizes the necessity of a living Union of Christ with the subjects of His redemption. 虽然他非常强调基督必须在生命上与他所救赎的对象联合 ，a living union， 一个活的联合 ，something which Anselm failed to do. 这个是安瑟伦后来没有论到的。He, that is Irenaeus, associates this with other ideas. 但是艾伦纽呢，又把这个概念。就是与其就联合与其他的概念连同了 ，such as， 比如说 ，that he rendered for us the obedience required for by God， 就是道或者基督为我们啊付出了神所要求的顺服 ，that he suffered in our stead， 他代替我们受苦了 ，paying our debt， 付了我们的罪债。And propitiating the Father, 在父神面前献上挽回祭，就是平息了父神的愤怒。And that He redeemed us from the power of Satan. 他同时也是救赎我们脱离撒旦的的权利的。好，在这里我们看到艾伦纽的基督论和基督大公，或者是他的救赎大公的说法。一方面有一种道德主义的倾向。一方面又有神秘主义，那穆里说正统的基督教是有某一些的奥秘的成分的，但是究竟应该怎么的来说出这个
神秘的成分呢，那要看，特别是新约圣经怎么说。那这里呢，伯克夫对阿伦纽的评估是，啊，不但的公允，啊，甚至服侍带着尊重和仁慈的。下一讲呢，我们就开始来讲阿伦纽跟泰祖良的救恩论、教会论和模式论。